All right, ready to dive in. We're tackling outliers today. Malcolm Gladwell's story of success. Yeah, the book that makes you wonder if we really understand success at all. Exactly. I mean, we always hear work hard, follow your passion, but Gladwell says not so fast. Right. He kind of throws a wrench in that whole pull yourself up by your bootstraps idea. So less about being self-made and more about... More about all these factors we don't even think about. Like, he uses the Canadian hockey system to make a point about this. Hockey? Okay. I'm intrigued. Lay it on me. So think about those youth leagues, right? They've got age cutoff dates, usually end of December. Ah, so you could have a kid born in January, another in December, same team, but... Huge difference, almost a full year older, even though they're technically in the, the same group. So advantage, January birthdays. But how does that play out? Well, those older kids, they're just bigger, stronger, more coordinated. Natural and, advantage, I guess. And it snowballs. Coaches notice them more, give them more ice time, more practice. They just excel faster. So it's not just that they might be better, it's that they get the setup to become better. Exactly. Timing matters more than we think. Suddenly, raw talent isn't the whole story. Makes you wonder where else that happens in life, you know? Those little things that give someone a head start. All over the place. Once you start looking for them, Gladwell would say that's key to understanding success. Which brings us to probably the most famous thing from Outliers, that 10,000-hour rule. Like, to be really good at something, you need to put in those hours of practice. And he's specific about it. It's not just clocking in. It's deliberate practice, pushing yourself constantly. So those hockey players, maybe that extra year is like, built-in extra practice time almost. In a way, yeah. Maybe they had some natural talent to start, but it's the opportunity to really hone it that sets them apart. Which, thinking about our own lives, kind of reframes how we view effort, doesn't it? It's not just about trying hard, but trying smart. Right. Are you getting those focused hours in, whatever your thing is? That's what Gladwell makes you think about. So much to unpack there already. But I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface of what Gladwell gets into with this whole success thing. Oh, we're just getting started. Wait till we get to cultural legacies. That's a whole other layer. Cultural legacies, huh? Okay, that one's new to me. It's kind of wild, actually. Gladwell says it's like this hidden inheritance we get that can totally shape our path, especially when we're talking about success. Okay, I need an example here because I'm not quite picturing how this all works. All right, so he talks about those East European immigrants, you know, the ones who basically built New York's garment industry back in the day. Right, early 1900s, right? Exactly. And he's like, yeah, they worked hard, obviously, but there was something else going on, something they brought with them. You mean, like, besides just being willing to work your tails off? Totally. It's like generations of their families had been tailors, seamstresses. They grew up around it. So it's like they had a head start without even realizing it. Kind of. It's like this ingrained knowledge work ethic. Even their sense of community played into it. That gave them a huge EE advantage, you know? It's true. You think about those old school businesses. It wasn't just about one person being a genius. It was the whole family, even the neighborhood sometimes. Right. And Gladwell's point is, we don't always recognize those legacies we're carrying. Like, what did our families, our cultures pass down to us that shape how we see the world, how we approach work? I like that. Makes you think, what are my hidden legacies? The good AD, yeah. the maybe not so good ones we got to work through. Totally. And that can be tough to figure out, right? Which is probably why he brings up this whole analytical intelligence versus practical intelligence thing. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Like, we put so much emphasis on book smarts. Right. And don't get me wrong. Being able to think critically is super important. But Gladwell's saying, hold on, there's this other kind of intelligence that matters just as much, maybe even more in the real world. Okay. So break it down for me. What exactly is practical intelligence in Gladwell's world? Think of it like, like street smarts, but applied to everything. It's knowing how to work a room, how to read people, how to get things done, even when the rules aren't clear. Ah, uh, so it's not just what you know, but how you use it. Exactly. And he's got this great example in the book. It's about this Japanese soup factory. Oh, yeah, the soap factory. That story cracked me up, but it also kind of blew my mind. Right. It's such a Gladwell move. So this factory, they keep having this problem. Empty soap boxes ending up in the shipments. Huge waste of money, right? The worst. So they bring in all these hot shot engineers, right? Yeah. Guys with fancy degrees. So it's got to be some high-tech solution, right? You'd think. And these guys, they come up with this whole x-ray system. Expensive, complicated, oh. didn't work. Or like, it did, but it was overkill. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know who solved it? 
Some guy who actually worked on the factory floor. No way, seriously. What'd he do? Told him to put a fan next to the conveyor belt. Empty boxes are lighter. They just blew right off. Problem yeah. solved. See, that is practical intelligence in action. So simple, but nobody else thought of it. Because we're conditioned to think more complicated equals better. But sometimes it's about seeing the elegant solution that's right in front of you. And that's a skill, man. Totally. Yeah. So Gladwell's not saying ditch the book smarts. He's saying don't underestimate the power of knowing how to actually navigate the world, the people in it, all that. Nailed it. And the best part is, he says anyone can develop that. It's about observation, listening to people, not being afraid to try things, and maybe even fail a little along the way. So it's less about being born brilliant, more about being adaptable, yeah. resourceful. Totally. And this all ties into another big thing Gladwell talks about, this idea of fulfillment being crucial to long-term success. Fulfillment, huh? That's a new one. I always figured success was more about, like, hitting those milestones, you know? Yeah. Getting to a certain point. Yeah, but Gladwell throws a curveball. He's saying it's got to be deeper than that. Like, real success, the kind that lasts, it's got to be fulfilling on a personal level. So it's not just about the external validation, the stuff other people see. Nope. It's got to resonate with you, woo, the work itself has to have meaning. Okay, so what's Gladwell's recipe for fulfilling work? Spill the tea. He breaks it down to three things. Autonomy, complexity, and a connection between your effort and the reward. All right, unpack those for me. Autonomy, that's about being your own boss, kind of. In a way, yeah. It's about having control over what you do, how you do it, feeling ownership over your work. Makes sense. And complexity... I'm guessing that's about not being bored out of your mind. Exactly. Nobody wants to feel like a cog in the machine, right? <laughs> Gladwell's saying you got to be challenged, have room to learn and grow in whatever you're doing. Okay, so autonomy, challenge. Yeah. And that last one, effort, reward, connection. That's like the more you put in, the more you get out. Yeah, but it's deeper than just like getting a bigger paycheck because you worked overtime. It's about feeling like your effort directly translates to something you value. So it's that feeling of accomplishment, knowing you made a difference. Bingo. And Gladwell's point is, if those three things aren't there, you're going to burn out, even if you look successful on paper. Yeah, you'll hit those milestones, but will you even enjoy it? That's kind of bleak, but also makes you think. Right. And here's where it all ties back to that accumulative advantage thing. Remember we talked about that? Vaguely. Refresh my memory. It's like success builds on itself. Those little wins you rack up early on, they snowball into bigger and bigger opportunities. Oh, yeah, like that whole compound interest thing, but for, like, your whole life. Exactly. Right. And those hidden advantages, cultural legacies, even just being in the right place at the right time, that all plays into it, too. So it's like those early experiences kind of lay the foundation for everything that comes after, even if you don't realize it at the time. Totally. And this is where Gladwell brings it all home, talking about those true outliers, you know, the people who just blow everyone else out of the water. Yeah, the ones who redefine what success even means. But here's the thing. He says those people, they're crazy rare. And it's not because they're just chasing fame or money. It's about being passionate about something and going all in. More than that, it's like they've mastered their craft, whatever it is, to the point where they find that deep fulfillment just from the doing. The success is almost a side effect. So it's less about the destination and more about the journey. Man, Gladwell's got me questioning everything I thought I knew about this whole success thing. That's his superpower, right? Making you see things differently. So as we wrap up our deep dive into outliers, what's the biggest thing you hope our listeners take away from all this? I think it's about recognizing how complex success really is. It's not just about working hard. It's about understanding those hidden advantages, finding work that truly resonates with you, and being ready to put in the time to master your craft. And not beating yourself up if it doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. Exactly. And who knows, maybe some of our listeners, they're already on their way to becoming outliers themselves. That's a great note to end on. It's not about comparing ourselves to others, but about making the most of our own unique path. Totally. And that's what Gladwell helps us see, all the different ways success can play out. Well said. All right, everyone, that's a wrap on another deep dive. We hope you enjoyed this exploration of outliers. Until next time, keep those minds open, keep learning, and most importantly, keep chasing that fulfilling life.